sorted. Um, tonight, I want to show you how we can use shadow art to understand how galaxies form and evolve. So together with an Australian team of astronomers, I've looked at thousands of galaxies. And what we've learned is that galaxies, just like humans, suffer from middle age spread. As galaxies get older, they form from these puffy young disks into these really big old spheroids. Now, our own Milky Way is a galaxy. It contains about 200 billion stars, um, and these are all held together by gravity. But if we want to understand how our own Milky Way formed, how it will evolve, but also what's going to happen once it collides with the Andromeda galaxy, our nearest neighbor, then we need to look at three-dimensional shapes of galaxies. Now, what I'm going to be needing from you tonight is to imagine that this screen on my left, even though it's small, is our night sky. And our night sky is full of interesting objects. That's so, the person up front here has a great view. What you see here are all galaxies. But there's one big problem. These look really boring. And they are just two-dimensional shadows. So, in space, we've got these three-dimensional objects, and once they hit this screen, our night sky, we observe them as two-dimensional objects. So, what we're going to take you through tonight is how we can go from these two-dimensional shapes to actual three-dimensional galaxies. But, before I go into that direction, um, let me start with something a little bit closer to home. Imagine that we are aliens, and we're observing the Earth. Imagine you want to find out how human life evolves. You want to learn how a single human grows from being a baby all the way to their grave. Now the first bit is easy. Babies are really small, adults are really tall, well, maybe yay high. Um, but that part of human life is fairly easy to understand. But once you start asking the really difficult question, where do babies come from? That's where you can't need to have different productions. And this is what I'm going to demonstrate now. Um, here is four random pictures of a pregnant person from the internet. <laughs> yeah. Um, right. Um, you have to take my word for this. The problem here is we're observing this person from one side. When you want to observe how someone goes, if it's pregnant, you need to look at their belly. So what happens if you, you know, um, Look at these different people, um, some are easy to understand, but the first person is wearing clothes. That makes making babies in general a lot harder, um, but in this case, number three is a he, and he is not happy that you just asked him how many months pregnant he is. <laughs> also, these other projections tell you a little bit more about how babies are made. Um, and according to the internet, if you look all the way at the bottom right, at the end of pregnancy, butterflies start to appear. Um, it's a really magical thing. The key thing I want you to take away from this is that it makes a difference how you observe someone. And if you only have one projection, you need to pick the right one. And the same thing is true for galaxies. So with me today, I have this really high-tech, advanced model of what our Milky Way looks like. And it's something like this. It's just a single plate, a single disc that our Milky Way, where most of the stars are in. If you had to imagine where we are in our Milky Way, we're not in the center, sorry, we're somewhere here down the bottom. But our Milky Way is what we call a disc galaxy. Now, depending how we observe it, we're going to get a very different shape. This is, if you put it like this, this is something what people would say the Earth looks like from space, that is, if you believe in a flat Earth. Um, but depending on the inclination, you get a shape that goes from an ellipse all the way into a circle. Alright, cool. We've figured out what the shape of galaxies is. But there's a bit of a problem. Um, the people at the front row can see it. Um, I've picked three of my favorite galaxies here at the bottom. I'm going to show you to you in a second. But what I want to demonstrate first is that not all galaxies look like this. Once galaxies collide, all of the stars get re-hustled and they look, and the galaxy that comes out looks like a totally different thing. It will look like something like this. In projection, though, 
This looked exactly identical to the plate that I just had. So galaxies come in different shapes and sizes. Now I'm just going to ask this man in front to hold the ball for me. Thank you. Um, here I've got another shape. Um, this is actually a footy ball. Um, depending how you project it, it looks again round to an ellipse. Thank you, sir. Um, so we've got a problem. This galaxy, observed like so, looks identical to that sphere. But these are very different stages of evolution in galaxies. And this is where shadow puppetry comes in. Now, um, little disclaimer, I practice everything with my right hand, but I'm standing on the left, so bear with me. Uh, right. <laughs> yeah, there we go. This is, of course, a... Serious dog. Serious dog, yeah, the star. Oh, really. Good on you. <laughs> my nephews and nieces, they love it. But the one thing that they have figured out is I'm using my fingers to make these animals. They understand that if you use your fingers, you can reproduce this shape. So in their heads, they've already done the calculation, ooh, using fingers, I can make two-dimensional shapes onto a projector. And the same thing is true for galaxies. If you look at galaxies, nature has given us this little extra bit of information. Galaxies like our Milky Way, have 200 billion stars that nicely rotate in one direction. It's like cars going around a space track. If you look at this lovely volleyball here, this galaxy, because it merged and it collided with another, doesn't have any rotation anymore. It looks more like a swarm of bees. So all the stars in here going crazy. So all of a sudden, all of a sudden, we have an extra little bit of information that tells us this is not a sphere, this is in fact a rotating galaxy. So all we need to do is measure the extra parameter. We need to measure how galaxies rotate. How do stars rotate within galaxies? Now here in Australia we have a fantastic instrument on the Anglo-Australian Telescope that does exactly that. It's called SAMI, and together with an Australian team, I've been using SAMI for the last couple of years, and we've looked at thousands of galaxies. And by doing that, we have figured out what the true three-dimensional shape of galaxies is. Now, to complete the picture, we need one more thing. We need to understand how old a galaxy is. Again, nature's been extremely generous to us. Galaxies that are young look primarily blue. They have a lot of young hot stars in them. Galaxies that are very old look very red. And to sort of wrap up the story, once you put these two together, and I'll describe it for people that can't see it completely. Once you put shape and age together, we found that there's a relation between these two. Very young galaxies look like our Milky Way, look like very thin disks. And as they grow older, they become these really round, red, buffy spheroids. So just like humans, galaxies <laughs> suffer from middle age spread. They start out young and thin, they're really pretty, but once they go old, they become big, buffy, and round. Thank you. <laughs>